Today we'll be examining the President's fiscal year 2013 budget proposal, which was sent to Congress yesterday. I believe the President's budget would continue to move the nation in the right direction. According to the administration, under the President's budget, the deficit as a share of the economy would fall from 8.5 percent of GDP in 2012 to 2.8 percent in 2022. That represents real progress. It's important to remember the economic crisis that the President inherited. I think all of us remember back to 2008 and 2009 when we experienced the worst recession since the Great Depression. The economy actually contracted. It shrunk at a rate of almost 9 percent in the fourth quarter of 2008. We lost 800 private sector, 800,000 private sector jobs in January of 2009 alone, and unemployment was surging. Those are the conditions the President inherited. They were not of his making. He was asked to come in as the cleanup crew. He also faced a housing market that was in crisis with home building and home sales plummeting and record level of foreclosures. And we faced a financial market crisis as well that threatened to set off a global financial collapse. We have come a long way since then. The federal response to the crisis, including actions taken by the Federal Reserve and, to be fair, in the final days of the Bush administration, they took important actions. The Obama administration did as well, and Congress participated. Those actions successfully pulled us back from the brink. And President Obama, I believe, deserves considerable credit for avoiding what could have been a second Great Depression. As I noted earlier, in the fourth quarter of 2008, the economy shrunk at a rate of almost 9%. Positive economic growth returned in the third quarter of 2009, and we have now had 10 consecutive quarters of economic growth. We see a similar picture in the private sector jobs market. In January of 2009, the economy lost more than 800,000 private sector jobs. Private sector job growth returned in March of 2010, and we now have had 23 consecutive months of growth with the last month over 250,000 jobs being created in this economy. I think all of us would like to see even stronger economic growth and more job creation, but although unemployment is still too high, it has certainly come down substantially. The pace of this recovery is somewhat predictable because the best scientific evidence we have now is after a financial crisis, it takes longer to recover and weak unemployment continues for a longer period of time. Looking forward, I believe we need to remember that we really face two critical problems in this economy, one short term and one longer term. Short term, we are still recovering from the worst recession since the Great Depression, and that was not the result of the policies of President Obama. He inherited that condition. Although the economy is improving, we still have relatively weak demand for goods and services, which is holding back even stronger economic growth. Longer term, we face a debt threat. Job one is to improve economic growth with steps to strengthen demand. Simultaneously, we need to enact a credible plan to bring down our debt. Our Republican colleagues I believe, have completely overlooked the first problem of weak demand and would actively make that problem worse by imposing fiscal austerity right now. They have focused solely on the longer-term debt threat. As a result, their policy proposals of imposing fiscal austerity now would only further weaken demand, which would lower economic growth, kill job creation, and choke off the recovery. I just say to my colleagues, I believe they've got it half right. 
absolutely we have a long-term debt threat. We have to cope with that. But in the short term, what we have is weak demand, and we also have to cope with that. The Republican proposals for immediate fiscal austerity would fit a circumstance in which we saw rising interest rates. But we don't see rising interest rates. In fact, interest rates are at a record low. The problem we have right now is weak demand. Here is how another leading economist, Dr. Joel Pracken, the chairman of Macroeconomic Advisors, described the problem in his testimony before this committee just weeks ago. He stated the number one problem that small businesses say they have to deal with right now is lack of demand. They do not say access to capital. They do not say the burden of regulation. They say their order books are thin. That's what we hear in every corner. The chairman of the Federal Reserve has told us that. The head of CBO has told us that. And that's why companies are not hiring as fast as they might otherwise do, even though they have record profit levels and $2 trillion sitting on their balance sheets. But we do need to address the second problem of rising debt. And this is where I agree with our colleagues on both sides who have made that a critical issue. And we should not wait to respond, but not by imposing fiscal austerity right now, but by adopting a plan that phases in fiscal discipline as the economy strengthens. We really need an economic two-step. First, we need short-term strengthening of demand by investments in infrastructure. That would put people to work and make America more competitive. Second, and simultaneously, we should adopt a credible and serious plan that puts us back on a sounder long-term fiscal course by fundamental tax reform, by reforming the entitlements, and by cutting wasteful spending. All of that is required. In his testimony, uh, testimony before the Senate Budget Committee last week, Federal Reserve Chairman Bernanke addressed the need for this kind of two-step approach. He testified, and I quote, even as fiscal policymakers address the urgent issue of fiscal sustainability, they should take care not to unnecessarily impede the current economic recovery. Fortunately, the two goals of achieving long-term fiscal sustainability and avoiding additional fiscal headwinds for the current recovery are fully compatible. Indeed, they are mutually reinforcing. To address the short-term lack of demand, the President's budget includes a number of proposals that include, one, extending the payroll tax cut and unemployment insurance benefits through 2012. I welcome the fact that we seem to have a breakthrough, at least on the payroll tax cut front. Second, providing $50 billion in upfront infrastructure investment for the construction of roads, bridges, rail, and airport facilities. Third, extending the 100% business depreciation deduction for new investments. I can just say as a small business uh, participant myself, I can testify to the value of that. Provide $30 billion for school modernization. Provide $30 billion to help states and localities retain and hire teachers and first responders, establishing Project Rebuild to create jobs by restoring distressed communities. And finally, creating a new tax credit for small businesses that add jobs and increase wages. So my own evaluation of this budget is it moves in the right direction. It does substantially reduce the deficit as a share of GDP, cutting it by two-thirds over the budget period. It reduces discretionary spending. Let me put that slide up if we can. Re reduces discretionary spending to the lowest levels of share of our economy in 50 years, actually in 60 years. You can see discretionary spending drops. Its previous high was 13.6 percent. This brings it down to 5 percent of our national income. Now, that is a substantial change. This budget also indicates the need for additional steps. But for additional steps to be taken, it's going to take all of us 
to find some way to come together. I very much hope that even though this is an election year, we will come together on the longer-term challenge that we confront. 